Hi guys, you don't know, this is Jolly. This Jaja lead me. And it's one play Africa's one year anniversary. You don't know. Hello, what do you mean? Go away, I'm feeling lonely. I'm going to enjoy tonight. It's Jaja lead me. In the yard. My boss tells a very beautiful story of how hard it was to get an artist for an interview during this era. I mean, producing the show was one heck of a job. Getting the artist managers a long ride. But today, social media has proven it so very powerful. I'm seated here with a gentleman that was literally a tweet away. And he's here. I am a very big fan of his music. I love everything about him. But apparently, he's pretty new in the space. So we're going to talk to Benel. No Benel, anything Benel. We are going to expose him today. You're welcome to One Play 360. And I am T. Akini Pam. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Nice to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> how how is life? I'm everything blessed by God's grace. You seem very very calm. I am. I mean, it reflects in your song. It seems like... Yeah. Wait, Just so chill, minding my business. What? Just chill and minding my business. Minding your business. Yes, yes. In an industry. <laughs> Let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah, because I don't want to get in trouble. So I, I just say less. Are you afraid of trouble or you think your, your brand is not ready for trouble? I think I'm young and I want to be move cautiously. Like learn enough, grow enough before I start saying too much. Because there are a lot of things I actually have to say, but I want to be sure. You want to be sure first. Yeah. So you are that kind of artist that when we, when we give you the listening ear, we expect that you come and tell us that this industry, they are top. Like, you come and talk. Yeah, just caution, caution first. Caution first. Yeah, before you make uh, mistakes that, are, that can cost you. So just be cautious. What have you heard about the industry that's making you so scared to speak up, even if there's something watching you at this stage? Um, it's not even centered on the industry, it's just people, you know, even day-to-day -day activities, even your family members, there are things you see and people hear differently. You can even say good morning and someone will hear good evening. So it's just like interpersonal relationships and all those things that can create this kind of problem. It's like it happen to anybody. So getting into the business, I just want to be cautious. Yeah, check cautious. So how long have you been in the business? Um, not too long. I have a song out that came like two months ago. And I think the first time people really heard of me professionally on the record is on uh, Don't Cry, okay. where Sakude featured me and put me on his album. Okay. Yeah, big love to kiss up. We'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. But before that, who really was Benel? Were you a guy in school or you were a guy trying to do music but you hadn't come out officially? What, what really was Benel doing before Don't Cry? I was a student in Kenya University reading computer engineering. <laughs> um, before that I was in Prempe College and I used to manage a group of singers, sort of. So we take them to sing, perform in other senior high schools. Were you were a student in Prempe or you were just managing students in Prempe? I was a student and I was doing that as well. So that's where the whole music thing really started. Oh, okay. So when I got to Kian USD, I was trying to get into other genres, explore my sound. So I started making videos with a friend, um, Abednego, shout out to go. We go to, um, we meet in his room, we make videos, we started building a fan base, supporters. Wait, is this your tone of voice or because of, you know? No, this is how I talk. Oh, really? Yes, please. Wow, that's nice. Continue, I'm listening. <laughs> Oh, you're flattering me on set. Oh, no, no. I mean, I was just trying to see if you could amplify the voice, but oh, if this is okay. your tone, no problem at all. Okay, yeah, this is how I speak. Oh, do you, let's go, let's go, it's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So back to the story. Um, we're building a fan base, getting some supporters. It was getting international slowly. There was this day I saw someone, someone hit me in my DM and said, hey, you're blowing up in Tanzania. That was just a normal cover. So I was like, you know, we have to start doing this, start hitting the studio. Yeah, that's when we started doing it professionally. If you went to Prempe, then you're not as calm as you, you purport to be. Because those that didn't even go to Prempe full time, that they were running from schools to Prempe, how much more you that? What really is the story behind Benel? Tell me, which kind of person are you? I'm calm and reserved, but I think just like every calm person, there's a wild side, there's a time to go crazy. There's a time to jump around, raise your voice, frown, you know, so 
right now i'm in a very comfortable space i want to play africa so stay calm okay now let's talk about you deciding to jump on somebody's record professionally before your own record what was that about was there something you tried to do or the team around you encouraged you that you know what why don't you introduce because somebody introduced himself with a whole album yeah you came not with your song but somebody else's song what was the plan um honestly it was it wasn't even planned it was just me moving with my intuition the whole time um from the covers i was making on instagram to even working with kinsak it wasn't anything we planned it just happened and i decided to run with it yeah okay let's talk about music in kn usd and then prempe were you able to amass some form of fan base did they know you or you were that coded boy that was doing yeah. this what i was more of that coded boy even my classmates were extremely surprised when they saw me on the no pressure album because i'm just to reserve money my business back to um to the dormitory can get back to class all of that so i was not really doing it for people to i don't know how to put it i was not marketing myself in my classroom i was just doing it on instagram so it was only those who follow me on instagram that could see it um well i've learned from it and <laughs> it was a good experience of course but like i said i've learned from it so i should have marketed myself more in kn usd um, but yeah now they know that i do this and they are supporting me heavily the course you did in school how are you blending it with music i'm um, even right now i'm doing my nss um, at an itc an ict sorry an ict oh. center and i'm an it genius in a way oh wow so i think we'll be I'm friends after music, nice nice yeah, so when i'm not doing music i'm doing something it wait what do you do in it are you a, a developer i mean like web developer do you do hacking no, uh, some more, people I have to hack in cyber this life. security cyber security yeah that's nice yeah oh nice wait so can you retrieve people's hacked accounts anything is possible with me oh i have a new friend <laughs> <laughs> i have a new friend yeah, in the industry yeah, yeah. now let's talk about how you are blending music and national service how is it going it's crazy. I've not yet told my boss I do music, so... <laughs> Your boss doesn't listen to music? No, he does. I'm, I'm yet to inform them, but I, I do my best. When I have an interview, I just talk to them and say, Sir, please, can I have a day off? And they understand, even though I've not told them anything yet. But, yeah, I, I do my best to balance things. Even with school, I used to balance things, you know. There was, even this day, I had an exam. But I still had to go to YFM. I still had to like go to a radio station and do something. So I, I, I just make sure no side is losing too much. Yeah. Your outlook. I know for Ghana, we are most of us are not that open-minded to accept people who do rasta or who have you know long hair to come to the corporate office. But here you are, being a tech genius. How does your boss or how are they accepting you, especially when you are a national service personnel? How is it going? Um, I don't even know whether to say this on camera, but I don't look like this every day. Oh. I look like this when I have to be in a professional setting. On Wait. a normal, I just comb my hair out, scuff it a bit. It looks normal and I go to the workspace. So even a colleague of mine yesterday saw my picture on Instagram. She's like, are you Benel? It's like, ah, so how come you're looking like this? So yeah, I don't look like this every day, but when I have to get the work done, I switch up in seconds and boom. So after this interview... Yeah, go back to the corporate world. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so then we'll take a quick break and then we'll dive into music proper and what the features he's done so far means to Benel. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? My name is Brian Domensa, and I'm live here at One Play Africa. I just want to say a big congratulations to One Play Africa for their one year anniversary. They've done so well, bringing lights to more creatives, and we appreciate y'all. One Play, One Play, One Play. Add class to your music. Yo, welcome back to One Play 360. I am TDK Nipa. I'm seated here with Benel, and we are talking about life before don't cry we've done that we are coming to talk about life after don't cry or maybe a little before don't cry how did it come about i visited your instagram page there isn't much of you there 
I mean, it's just a normal boy doing, you know, as you said, covers. How did the call from Sack and his team come to you? And what was, let's reminisce that moment. How was it like for you? It was a great feeling. It was a milestone for me, obviously. Um, there are a lot of people who would want a feature, but would, are still not there yet. I don't know if I can say that they will go away with it and get away with it. So, the story about that record, it started from my covers. I was making covers on Instagram, like I said, and my manager saw it, Black Nana saw it, Angel Town saw it, MOG saw it, and let me just say this exclusively here. Right before the camp, MOG called me and said, Sag, they do some writing camp for you for pull up. I'm like, sure. Um, I think two days later, my manager said the same thing. The third day, another person who wouldn't want me to disclose his name called me and said, Sack is having a writing camp. So I feel like this thing was written in time that has to happen. Because the way three different people are like, we want to get you there. Um, so after the session we had that day, everybody left. It was left to just Sack and I. And I was outside and the beach was playing and then Emoji was like, yo, come here, come, let's do something. We started vibing and then, boom, we made magic. But that was a beautiful day in my life because things changed in seconds. Um, I even had a record with Zlatan that day. Oh, dope! Crazy. And crazy. it's your record or his record? It's mine. Oh, nice. Yeah, crazy. Um, I was just recording um, this song with Ken Sark and then he came inside. He was like, yo, you're really good. And two seconds later, he had jammed on the song. So, um, Don't Cry was not the first song we did. Oh, nice. No, 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 no it wasn't. Yeah, short story. <laughs> okay, when a young artist like you gets the chance to meet people like that and work with them without going through maybe any hardship to get there, how do you interpret it? Do you see it as you are favored or you see it as you are that good and you deserve it. Yeah, I think it's grace. Um, you know, I am talented as well, and I believe myself as well. Um, both, both things you mentioned come into play, but like I said, it's, it's just grace and being at the right place at the right time. Like I said, everyone had left. I was still there. What was I doing there? <laughs> Were you exactly. doing there? Though? So sometimes it's just being at the right place at the right time. And yeah, that's how it happened for me. But yeah, beautiful. After the project dropped, do you ever sit down in your space and feel like you've jumped a step? Yeah. Because Sarko Deer is Sarko Deer. I mean, in Ghana music, if I'm not exaggerating, it's probably one of the biggest. Do you feel like you've jumped a step? I feel like I've made huge progress, but not like jumped a step. Um, you can't skip the process, no matter what. But I feel like I've made huge progress. I've, it's, like I said, it's a milestone. Um, I, I feel blessed. That's all I can say about that. Okay, now let's talk about your social life after Sack put you on. How was your social life like? Were you feeling a little high in your own coded way? No, or, you know, how were you at feeling? All. Not at all. I'm, I'm the calmest person. Like, like I said, I don't even look like this every day. So a lot of people don't even know I do music yet. And like I said, when before we made the record, I was just doing covers. So I didn't have so much of a huge fan base or a lot of listeners or all of that. So we are just taking it slow. But I was really calm. I didn't overdo anything. I did as much marketing as I could, as much promo as I could. And that was it. But I just took it easy. When you heard from Amrado's team that they wanted to work with you, what came in mind? I was blown away. Um, I think that was also as organic as it gets. Um, I saw his freestyle on a show in the UK. I put it on my story. I tagged him. Westwood. Yes, please. And I followed him. And he followed back. Then we got talking. Two seconds later, I had a song. And he told me he was going to put it on his patient's EP. I was like, okay. I told my manager about it. He's like, that's great. And after about a month, we decided to do a concert and put me on the concert as well. So big shouts, big love to Amrado. He's been putting me on, tweeting about me. He, he still hits me up and it's crazy. It's crazy, it's great. So far, have you 
been able like do you see that you have been able to tap into all this audience and you are using it for the course it, it seems you still not launched your career proper what, what are you waiting I understand. for i understand um i think we we need to properly market ourselves but before i go more into that i want to say their fan bases have been very very supportive there was this time i was in kumasi and for the concert i just mentioned and i was about to perform for me but i wasn't sure the crowd respond i was like oh charlie for me uncle and they were singing back to back i was like oh okay they know the song i performed don't cry they know the song there are days I go out randomly and then people are like, are you the don't cry boy? So I've noticed at least they are... you the don't cry boy? <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. people even call me Sako there town because they can't... They are not... The name is not really in their heads. So some people, hey, Sako there, Sako there. So yeah, their fan bases obviously have been very supportive and yeah, I, am, I have to focus and build mine. That's what we are doing. How is the team writing on this to establish your face and especially the name in the minds of the listeners? Um... As an artist, I'm doing as much as I can. I'm granting enough interviews. I'm doing as much promo as I can, like I mentioned. And we keep going. Definitely, you see something beautiful in a few days. So Let's talk about disco. How is disco faring? Disco is faring great in a way because, like you mentioned, I'm a new artist with almost zero listeners. So to see the amount of love I'm getting from Twitter, social media, even TikTok. It, it's great. I'm, I'm happy. I'm pleased as a person. And I'm definitely going to do more. I have an EP coming out because I want to put more sounds out. I want people to be introduced to my sound. I feel like they've had a few records, but they definitely don't know what I could do. And so I want to put out an EP, put some different vibes on it, about six songs. I think this week I've been listening to about 357 songs. I had to choose six out of them. Wait, hold on. Your <laughs> songs? Or yeah, my songs. I've been writing my whole life. Um, I think I started writing 2019. So I have some songs that I have enough, even though I still write. But I have enough. So I was listening to like so many of them. And I just want to choose about six special ones, put it on an EP, put it out promo it properly, market it, and then people get more introduced to myself. Are you on a label? I am on a label, Wave Yard Entertainment. Come again? I am on a label, Wave Yard Entertainment. Okay, and so far, how is it going? Because right now you are like the coolest superstar. I saw um, Sadiq Abdullah yeah. tweeting, you know, he wants to go and listen to Fermi and stop this thing they are doing. Big love to him too, big love to him how, too. How are they appreciating the talent? Do, do they see that, okay, we made, made, made the right move with this guy or how is that conversation also going for you? Um, it's, it's going great. <laughs> Wait, I they work on the post the way you're answering no. very swift. That's one person. It's great, it's all right. Everything is going on yes, smoothly. Yes. So where can we get this school? This school is on every streaming platform. Um, Apple Music, Spotify, you can even find it on TikTok. Anywhere you love to listen to music, you can find this school, YouTube, anywhere. Yeah. Okay. It's out with the video as well. So. Oh, great. Yeah. So the international places, that's your, your songs, your covers, are making waves. How are you chasing the song? Um, I've planned a lot of trips, but because of the, the other stuff I do, like with the national service, the reason I want to finish it quickly is because I, I want to do a lot. A lot of different things. I want to put myself in different spaces of the world, get inspired differently, and tap into those fan bases. Because um, people can be supporting you now, but if they are not getting much of you, they may pull away. So I want to get into their country and r like rock with them for a while. Yeah, do something with them, even if it's some collabs, a small tour. Yeah, promote my music in those countries as well. Okay. Congratulations. I am really a big Thank fan you. of yours. I've been playing Fermi so many times. I'm sure everybody in my office can sing Fermi. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are really doing well. I Thank love you. your voice. Thank you so How much. do you train your voice though? Tip. Just give me a tip before I end the show. Honestly, I don't. Eh? I don't even have the time. To train your voice. So it's all natural. Yes. It's, it's just... I just eat, sleep, wake up, work, back restarts but i will i'll make sure i train my voice more hey god or i train my voice god, god gave some some and you didn't give some some <laughs> okay
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Benel. Benel, drop your social media handles. Um, you can follow me everywhere at Benel Official, B E N E R L, and you add official to it everywhere Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Chilla, anywhere. Same thing. The way I'm going gaga over you, I'm sure your fan base is made up of ladies. Yeah. Over the man them today, all about. <laughs> The man them today. I hope the prem prem man thems will rally behind you because you it's a big family and yes. if they see you as their star, I'm sure you will move faster than you even think. One play, one play, one play. At class to your music.